Hello, everyone. That's us live. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining, man. How are you doing? There? Oh, awesome. Really great. You know, it's like, um, I'm not gonna lie. This is a really weird feeling because I've been like watching things on YouTube. And it was only yesterday, not yesterday, this week that I finally saw some people from LinkedIn live in person. Like I, I got to see a Nicola just the other day. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, the guy is very tall. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. I have a, a colleague and I, I've i really only seen him like a few times, like not, you know, on a Teams call. And I always forget how tall he is. There's something about, of course, sitting down that you don't actually understand that. And it's quite strange when you see someone for the first time. It's like, oh, you're a big person, man. My God. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Yeah. I just I just noticed something. For the first time ever, I always have like on this screen here, I've got, you know, our chat here and then I have YouTube. And I said today I also opened LinkedIn and I didn't actually realize that on LinkedIn it's even more delayed than, than YouTube actually is. So I'm going to close that. It's very confusing. Anyway, before we get into all that, mate, would you like to introduce yourself? All Do right. You? So, okay. Hi, people. My name is NJ. That's how you pronounce it. It's uh, if you have Trump problems with the pronunciation, think New Jersey NJ. That's always how I introduce myself. So I am, I am Korean, Swedish, but now I live in Poland and I'm a power bi developer who honestly just started youtube as a hobby because mm. i had a kid and i could no longer drink you know it's like in my home time and after <laughs> seven o'clock when the kid goes to sleep i was like i need to be more productive than doing netflix and uh mm. here we are that's that's a very solid reason um belated congratulations i know the kids like you said 14 months old now but that's thanks wonderful. so much I hope you're enjoying um, new parenthood and oh, uh, yes and yes and no right like parenthood is <laughs> uh, let's be honest a lot of the data community are you know it's like sometimes a little bit like they've already got kids who are five plus so everyone mm. else in the data community seems to be able to sleep except for me <laughs> yeah that's fair enough so um may i ask how old you are is that a rude question uh, not at all okay but then i'm gonna ask you to take a guess how old do you think i am <sighs> Oh, I'm going to go for, I don't know, 28, 30, that kind of age. That's range. actually exactly right. 30. That's what I am. Boom. Love it. That's it. I'm going to end, end in a high. That's the end of the live stream. Fantastic. Very good. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Goodbye. Um, yeah. I mean, I had, think I had my first kid run about, I think, 30 as well. Because I'd said to my wife, I want kids, but not when I'm in my 20s. And then I think basically turned 30 and she got pregnant. I was like, that's good timing. So, yeah. I think it's it's good time to have a first kid, mate. Oh yeah, no, for sure, right? It's just like, but let's be honest, uh, I haven't slept in 2023, so yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's... That, that, that's that, that's the rules, unfortunately. Yeah, but also, you know, in between your your kid not sleeping and stuff, you can also, you know, put the kid down, do some power bi, wait wait for the kid to wake up again. So it's it, it keeps you it keeps you going, mate. It keeps you motivated. Honestly, so when I made my first YouTube video, it was like using just like a using literally my phone connected to the computer. And, you know, it's like using my phone as a webcam. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, that was exactly my experience. So I was doing a little bit of power BI for like two hours. And then, you know, it's like the baby would get up. I'd feed the baby, swaddle mm -hmm. him and then go back to power BI afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I think I was classic um, lockdown. I was like. Oh, I can't leave the house. I can do, and I, my the hobby that I had before all of this was very much outdoors. I mean, not active because you know I'm not an active person. We're in like sport and stuff, um, but I was going out and like taking photographs of sporting events. Right, oh, that's very cool. Uh, it was really good fun, but obviously that wasn't happening anymore, and I just needed something else. And I said, "Well, I have camera equipment. I guess I could try and attach that to my, you know, my computer." And then only, you know, it took only. 17 Amazon orders of other bits and pieces that I needed. And uh, I was, <laughs> I was uh, good to go. Look, I'm not going to lie. It's it's really addicting to get new equipment, especially for this, right? Like, yeah. the reason that I went into this specifically is because, like, around six years ago, uh, when I was, you know, a little bit younger, I was trying to be a Twitch streamer, streaming video games. I, no did, way. Actu I, I did actually stream for, like, three months, but and I got a, a total of five subscribers. So, you know, I gave up gave up at that time but like this microphone that i'm using i have had for like the last seven years basically. yeah okay yeah yeah yeah. i can understand that no i am um, I, I this is what i say when you have some of the equipment it makes it a lot easier um 
but yes, it's it, when you have it lying around and you've got nothing to do, it's, it's a nice place to get started. But regarding you, your Power BI stuff and, and your channel, what's your, what's your favorite type of content or what's your favorite sort of stuff to work on in Power BI? I'm going to link your channel in the chat, by the way, so people can watch it. Uh, I mean, you know, it's like, I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of the content that, you know, it's like I'm putting out is basically just trying to game the, you know, it's like social media algorithm. Like that's probably my favorite parts of, you know, it's like producing content because yeah, okay. I, like LinkedIn is a game and YouTube is a game because uh, there are actions that you do on LinkedIn, like the way that you post, the way that you interact with people and commenting that are multipliers and subtractors mm -hmm. to your reach. So literally everything is a game. Like a year ago, polls would go out to literally hundreds of thousands of people and it would get the most, uh, you know, it's like reach. But, you know, it's like now it's like carousels, gifts, uh, you know, it's like uh, six months ago, one minute videos did amazing. And now they're like. So, so the rules of the game constantly change and no one knows mm. the rules. And I, I love that. It's, it's right up my alley. <laughs> you know what? That gives you such an amazing leg up because, and I'm jealous that you, you're interested in that because I just do not have the time. Oh no, actually, that's not true. I don't have the patience for it. I just, I look at it. I'm like, you know what? Like just post stuff. And then I, I, I get frustrated sometimes by the reach, of course. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to lie about that. But sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm trying to work out Okay, could I do this? And then after like five minutes, I was like, you know what? I just, I just don't care. I'm gonna post it and see what happens. But obviously, it makes a difference because I mean, I see your post. Like, I think the classic example was for this live stream where you posted something that was like notification, 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 and I posted something that was like, meh, meh, yeah, something like that. I was like, how do you, how do you do that? <laughs> it's mad. Realistically, I think the the main thing is that uh, at the end of the day. There's like basically three different things that you need to know about the, the all of the algorithms. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I have most of this from watching other, you know, it's like YouTube content creators, not in the data space, not in the Power BI space, but just, you know, general YouTube content creators. Mm -hmm. But also Twitter recently, like a couple months ago, released their algorithm, right? So, you know, it's mm -hmm. like uh, they actually, you know, it's like, released the code about what their algorithm was. And it was like, there, it was all about multipliers and, you know, it's like dividers. But if you kind of aggregated where all of that logic was coming from, all of the social media one only wants to do two things, right? Which is have content on their platform, which engages people to stay on the platform. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, you know, it's like actually have the content be something that people will go to continue using to other content, you know, the classic yeah. idea of doom scrolling on TikTok or something. And you're just like, yeah. so, so that's why TikTok is, you know, it's like such a good, uh, successful, you know, um, mm -hmm. social media platform because people will just stay on it for hours because the content is, uh, like popcorn. So that's how it is for LinkedIn and YouTube as well. As long as content is, uh, you know, makes people stay on LinkedIn, then, you know, it's like it, it gets more reach and things like that. I think for a while, the biggest multiplier on Twitter was being Elon Musk. I think that was really, was really up there, you know, um, that helped, I think. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> and now he owns it, right? And, you know, what a world it is now. What, what, what an amazing place. It's a fantastic. All you need is a few billion and then, and then you see, that's all you need. Forget all the, all the, all, all these, these rules and all the aggregators and multipliers just have billions and billions of dollars. And then you sort it really that's saying. So there you uh, go. Yeah. I, hey, look, you know what, when I have billions of billions of dollar dollars, I'll let you know what it's like. <laughs> Sounds good. It's like at billions and I'm going to spend it all on SEO my manager. There you go. <laughs> Uh, oh, I mean, man. you know, it's like, uh, who who knows what's going on in that guy's mind? <laughs> I don't want to know. It's too terrifying. Yeah. Um, but how was your, you, anyway, back to this event you were talking about before where you saw um, the people for the okay, first time. Yeah. What, which, so, what was this? So um, in Poland, in, uh, okay, so this is just something for you to know. The actual Polish pronunciation of the city that I live in is Wrocław, but you might see it spelled rock law so you know like uh, okay because yeah, yeah. the w in polish is a b so it's it's Wrocław, right and okay. the l is a w so and anyway in my city there was a you know it's like um they do a sequel uh, conference called sequel day and it's just like a three-day uh, you know it's like well, it's a two-day conference with a one-day workshop and it was really fantastic because the workshop that i attended was with albert alberto ferrari so you know it's like that was like i'll do 
uh, you know, the biggest name you could probably think of, you know, when you're thinking about stacks, right? Mm -hmm. So that was uh, fantastic. And I, I'm not gonna lie, you know, uh, I, after, you know, it's like the workshop, I was like, I, I need a little bit more of this. So I did buy the optimizing, you know, it's like decks that just got released. So That's fine, man. I, I've got to get in on that. And yeah. then, you know, it's like the actual conference itself is two days of, um, you know, it's like lots of different speakers, a lot of Microsoft MVPs. I got to talk to a lot of people that, you know, just seen Johan, which who you had, like, you know, it's like very recently as well. Yeah. You know, it's I, I saw him live, you know, he's cool. got a really fantastic beard in person and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's w w worth the money just to see the fantastic beard right oh yeah honestly i was like you know is it is it glued it it, it, it must be <laughs> it, it's really really just, you know, just like pull it off you know <laughs> oh for sure oh that's fantastic yeah no the um the the which dax course did you say about you bought again so there's an optimizing dax version optimizing two things, that yeah. just came out and i was like so, you know I, i've got to get in on that i didn't even ask alberto you know it's like do you think it's worthwhile for someone who just took your, you know, it's like mm -hmm. eight hour workshop on optimizing DAX to actually, you know, get this? Cause it's like 25 hours. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you, the answer he told me is, you know, look at the end of the day, you don't need to know why the storage engine, you know, it's like versus formula engine callbacks works in such a way and composite models work in such a way. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you want to understand why, Hmm. They've studied this for several years, and they're telling you how in the course. Yeah. And I was just like, "Yeah, okay, I'm sold. I'm in." No, it sounds. It sounds. I mean, I did. I've only done one of the courses. I did the mastering, um, mastering tabula, which was dense. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of information. I'm very happy that I think when you when you get the mastering tabula, maybe it's the same with all the courses, you get access for a few years. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy about that because I finished it and it took me a long time to finish it. Um, the final 50%, I really, I pushed through. I really had to make a conscious effort to do like a few hours every day, which to be honest, not every day, but I would, probably wouldn't recommend doing it that way because of the, those couple hours a day for, for me and um, for my fragile little mind was um, quite a lot probably. <laughs> um, but it's nice to have to have the reference to go back to those concepts that I've forgotten. Uh, it's also nice to be able to like actually understand what people are talking about when they say things like Vita Pack Engine and not just nod and smile like some kind of fool. Um, so really awesome stuff, worth the money for sure. Oh yeah, like uh, you know, I've been optimizing DAX for years now, and I you know it's like it was only this week that I finally understood what the quarry plan actually is <laughs> like you know uh you know uh, and, and when i say understand i mean i mean that on a very surface level <laughs> at the end of the day but it's not i mean to, to to get that surface level i'm sure it's a bit more than that you know i'm sure you're being you know um humble or whatever um then to talk to someone about it and then to understand what you're saying, which helps you kind of share information or learn more when you read other articles, you know, to get that ground level of information that when you look at other, like for example, quite often before I re I'll be reading a, um, a blog post or, or an article from um, SQL BI and I have to, you know, read something else to kind of understand, understand what they've written, you know? So to be able to go through an entire article without having to do that was a huge win. In, in, my, in my opinion so oh absolutely okay. like i actually think that you know it's like uh mike said this in you know it's like his uh podcast that you know the whole point of going to like a an in-person training is that you know it's like this kind of time that it would take you to go through several hundred you know it's like hundred different uh blog posts to, to pull them all together and then actually get the answer that you need mm. as compared to one person just feeding it to you that it makes a huge difference yeah Absolutely. No, it's good. Um, see, so there you go. We do, we, 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 we'll, we'll put a link in somewhere, maybe if I get time to do so. I should definitely do one of those optimizing DAX courses so far. I really want to use DAX Studio for writing long, calculated tables, I suppose. Yeah, it's got to be tables. It's got to be tables. All right, uh, Liam, I'm going to put it out there. Uh, you know, it's like <laughs> definitely, you know, it's like get on it because, uh, you know, I've been doing Power BI and I've been doing DAX for, you know, it's like, um, I, like three and a half years. That's that's mm -hmm. how long I've been doing Power BI. And you know, honestly, I feel pretty comfortable with DAX. And I was, you know, honestly, 
before going to the workshop, I was even maybe a little bit of a braggart about how well my optimizations were. And then I went and I actually, you know, it's like listened to Alberto speak. And now I realize that I was just a frog in a well and uh, callbacks are really important. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Take yourself to that next level all the time and get stuff done. What were you doing um, before Power BI? You said it was like three and a half years ago. What was it? Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's like... Um, I've been doing so so I I started basically you know it's like work in C++ and mm -hmm. then you know it's like um and then I met uh, you know it's like so I was living in you know it's like the UK doing university and then I went to Korea to you know it's like be closer to my family for mm -hmm. a little bit a uh, little bit of time and you know it's like in Korea I was doing C++ and after doing C++ I met uh, a girl and we moved to Poland and because I was a Swedish citizen well I still am because I'm a Swedish citizen mm -hmm. I needed to find a job in Poland to stay in Poland to you know to like be with my girlfriend at the time. Mm, okay. And so I was like I honestly before I came to Poland from Korea I applied to like 150 different jobs and you know it's like no one wants to hire someone who's not in the country. So it's like mm. I wasn't getting any callbacks. So I just made the jump. I caught a plane, uh landed here took the second job that gave me an offer because I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm tired of looking, I'll just yeah, take yeah. anything. And that job just happened to be a market data analyst. So I was doing snow mm -hmm. tickets, Excel, and I got a chance to learn VBA and automate basically 50% of my job. Okay. And and, th and that was that, and that yeah. was like the, you know, it's like the, the springboard that, you know, mm -hmm. landed me a job into doing SQL, you know, it's like uh, so ETL mm -hmm. processes yeah, and yeah. stuff. But then, and then, you know, it's like a month into the job, they were like, okay, so we got some Power BI licenses. Who wants to learn Power BI? And, you know, I just cool. started. So I was basically on the bench, right? And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I, I don't, I'm not doing anything. I, I'll do it. And now, a couple of years later, Power BI, that's all I do. <laughs> that's awesome. I like that a lot. I love it when the situations are basically having, you have a job and a lot of the job is sucks so you want to automate it and that's where it starts you know i think there are quite a few career paths that kind of start there and kind of fork off in another direction because of the need to do something better you know oh yeah absolutely like uh i'm not gonna lie it was to the point where i was using vba scripts to write emails in outlook you know it's like based okay. off of an excel sheet and things like that yeah and i know that office scripts is something that you know microsoft is pushing but it doesn't have that level of you know control that you can do mm -hmm. i mean okay look power automates there you can do most yeah. of the stuff there now but uh, you know, four or five years ago, uh, you know, really, really felt like you were just hacking the system. And yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. that was good times. Yeah. Sorry. Can you hear my dog in the background? It's just me. Yeah. Look, I I'm can, sorry but about it, that. It, it's, it's very <laughs> quiet and no worries. Uh, you will probably hear mine at some point too. Fair enough. Sir. Oh yeah. You have a dog or son. Did you say? I'm uh, so you. my dog. My oh dog. yeah. Dog. Sorry. Okay. What kind of dog, dog do you have? So I've got a uh, Western Terrier mixed with a poodle. Uh, and so, so the breed's actually called a Westie Poo, which I, I love. <laughs> yeah, any breed that's mixed with a poodle is good because it has the word poo in there. And it's just, I'm sorry. I know it's very immature, but it is quite funny at the same time. I mean, like, okay, come on. It is a little bit. What yeah. breed is yours? Sorry again? What breed is yours? Uh, I have a small, like, um, the little Dachshund thing. Mm -hmm. And I also have um, a Bernese mountain dog. So the the one that you can always hear barking is the little Dackel, um, Dach, Dachshund, Dackel in German. Mm -hmm. And um, the one that you can never hear is the Bernese mountain dog because that is big and just lie down. And every, they, they bark maybe like twice a day, but it's just like it's very one like deep bark. And then they kind of give up and go back. So, go so, back you, so you've got like the, you know, it's like the extremely large and mm. the extremely small, basically. Yeah, we got the small one first. And I was like, you know, what? I just I couldn't connect with that dog. There was something about it that I just didn't I just get did, we just didn't get on with one another. And I was like, is there something wrong with me? Do animals just hate me? I, was, I grew up with dogs, you know. Um, So I managed to convince my wife to get the second dog, but a big dog. And that one is kind of more like my dog. So it's kind of it's it's we have a balance now between the, the dogs. That's the thing about dogs. That's, you know, easier than kids. You can say which one is your favorite, right? You can't oh, do that yeah, with, yeah. with kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, 
l- let's be honest here. At the end of the day, uh, you know, it's like when it comes to dogs, it's dogs are a lot easier to handle than kids. You know, you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to teach dogs more than you know. It's like just potty training, really, right? I mean, that's true. Course. I mean, it, it's nice that with my kids now, I don't have to have to pick up their poo, but with the dogs, I was well. So there you go. That's the, that's um, that's one major difference there. But what are you gonna do? You no, gonna for do? sure, for sure. Are hey, you so sorry, uh, please? Uh, so Ben, uh, how long have you been doing this? Like, because you know, um, in the Power BI community, you 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 talk to like basically everyone, right? But I'm like, you know, uh, so you said this started in uh, COVID. I started YouTube stuff. Um, basically, at the start of, of lockdown, I, I would I was already planning to do anyway, to be honest, but um, it just became easier because of because of lockdown, and I just did more. Um, and then I think the live streams started probably about a year after that, because I had a license to for this software that we use, Restream, and I wasn't using it, and I was thinking, what could I do with that? And then I th- I just Maybe I'll try and you know do a couple of live streams, and it was good fun. And uh, yeah, I just kept. So I think about about maybe a year and a half. No, no, that's not true. I remember now. It was September. It was September, and the first one was with with Kerry Colosco. Oh, okay, fair enough. It all just suddenly came back to me there, you know. So oh, yeah. coming up two years now, probably actually. Oh well, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Like um, the one thing that I realized after lockdown is that I, you know, it's like ever since lockdown happened, I've been working from home and i and i love it you know it's like i wake up at 6 55 and i'm in a call at seven and it's all good oh. <laughs> but but it, oh it well i mean i i'm like the seven to three person because i got the kids so i'm up oh, okay. anyway right but yeah, yeah, yeah. more than anything else i think that's my tolerance for being social in person has degraded so much oh, yeah. like like yeah. uh the <laughs> workshop uh like the conference was so fantastic, but, mm. um, you know, I was representing, you know, it's like my company. I was at the stand. I was talking to every single person who, you know, came by and, uh, exhausting stuff. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same. I mean, I, I've been at just one conference, I think it was great. Really loved the experience, but very exhausting to be that social. And that's of course, no disrespect to anyone I spoke to. I met, it was really great, but, um, what I love about this live streams or just being so connected over a computer is the fact that it's a safe space. Like where I am now, it's where I feel very comfortable, you know? So it's much easier for me to communicate with people to speak in a, maybe a more informal way and just have a bit of a laugh. Whereas, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At a conference, it takes me a while to kind of loosen up a little bit. I feel much because I'm, it's not a safe area for me. And naturally it's, I wouldn't say I'm like, very very um what's it introverted i have that element of uh, of being introverted when i'm like surrounded by lots of people you know so this is for me a safe zone so i can oh, i yeah. can just talk <laughs> you know it's like but but that's that's i i really resonate with that i'm like you know don't get me wrong uh i am starting to try to you know it's like talk in more user groups and things like that yeah. you know it's like just because uh you know i eventually want to become a speaker because it seems like Different. the easiest way to travel to places but True. you know and and I'd, I'd love to you know it's like travel for work come on like it, mm. it sounds amazing but it's also like you know the you know it's it's di- I'm diametrically opposed to wanting to travel and meet people, but also mm. wanting to stay at home in my very comfortable bed. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but I think that's also the thing is it's right the fact that you can do a job and you can travel to go to conferences or whatever because you choose to, right? But if it's a necessity, it obviously the it, the dynamic feels so much different. Like I would I would never really want to have a job where I had to go to other places and I had to spend a week here or a few nights there. But if I can choose to go to a conference that, and it's again, it's because it's more on your terms. I think it's a, it's a nice thing to have, but it's great that you want to do some, some speaking, by the way, I've also tried to step that um, step it up in that regard as well. I was trying to do it. I've done a, a, a submission to, um, probably a next step, which I went oh, to me too. Year. Oh, nice one, man. Very cool. So maybe we'll see you there. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Be cool. uh, you know, it's like, hey, can I ask, uh, you know, it's like if, if you're able to disclose it, what's your what's your topic that you, you know? Uh... Oh, Deneb. Oh, of course, of course. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, I want I want to do more, but I was thinking that because it'll be like my first one speaking in person, mm-hmm. just keep it with something that I feel comfortable with. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I get that very much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 
if they um if they approve it then that would be cool also i submitted a similar session to something in november in italy because i was like that could be a cool place to go to <laughs> so like, exactly as you said right uh honestly i'm i'm like you know um it'd be so nice to go to Copenhagen because originally mm. I'm from Sweden, right? So I yeah. lived in Sweden for a very long time and this, my city is Malmo. So it's literally okay. right next to Copenhagen. So, you know, it'd be going home and seeing some friends basically. Very cool. And what's, what, um, what did you submit? What was your session? Oh, so um, basically my session was going to be about uh, design and discovery in Power BI Consulting. So I've been a Power BI Consultant for, you know, it's like a little while. And, you know, discovery is something that everyone does and everyone mm -hmm. has to do. And there are some questions that I think are very standard in, and you, you want to ask them in every single one. Like, what's the mm -hmm. purpose? Who are the end users? Things like that. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to kind of explain, uh, you know, it's like, have a discussion maybe in a little bit more detail how the answers to the questions that you ask affect the design of the reports right there's like nice. a couple of different things like you know there's four different general personas for you know it's like end users you've got like the c-suite you've got you know um, analysts operational and educational reports as well and it's like depending on the user the report changes especially yeah. considering the amount of time people will spend on the report, depending on who they are, will also change. And, uh, and you know, it, it's things like that. And, you know, like, yes, and uh, I, I thought it was very interesting to, you know, it's like have a presentation about how consulting works. So mm -hmm. like literally from the beginning of, you know, it's like when pre-sales starts just to when the, you know, it's like actual development starts, what happens between, you know, mm -hmm. it's like contacting a client and, you know, it's like, starting development that's basically what my session's about that sounds cool very interesting and what i like about i mean because i mean i think about the this i mean i've never been a consultant right i've only, always just been internal though i do think a lot of the job that i do is still very much consultancy i know it's different because it's internal but there's a huge amount of consultancy internally as well because you're working in different departments and you have your stakeholders of course yeah that kind of thing so yeah that sounds cool man so <clears throat> uh, yeah because i was like uh Look, I'm not going to lie. I can't compete technically with, you know, it's like people who've been doing this for like 15 years. So I was yeah, like, yeah. let, let's put something that I'm very comfortable with, put a yeah. spin on it, and we'll make it into a session. So that that, that's, that's where I'm going. It makes perfect sense. And I really, a long time ago, I stopped even trying to even consider this concept of competing with people because it's just, I, and this is a, a barrier. I, to be honest, I still have that barrier though. I still have that barrier of like, I have an idea and I don't do it because I think, yeah, yeah, whatever, like who cares about that? And then, and it so often it happens. And then like the next day or like a week later, I see someone else who does the same thing. It's on LinkedIn. I was like, ah, oh, man, I should have done it, but it's gone now. You know, uh, you, you know, I know exactly what you mean. You know, when dynamic uh, format strings came out, I was like, you know, Bass is going to make a video. You know, it's like Kerbal is going to make a video. Everyone's going to make a video, right? Yeah. So I was, uh, so when, when it came out, I had some material already because I was doing some format strings and calculation mm. groups. So right? I was like, so I just threw a whole bunch of stuff together and I, and I posted a video and I was like super proud, but you know, it's like the next day, you know, it's like, um, everyone started posting stuff and I was like, you know mm. what? At the end of the day, it wouldn't have mattered if I was first or not. Yeah. Like, I'm just happy that I actually made it, you know? I It's absolutely the, the correct attitude because the thing is people tend to, I mean, I could be wrong, but I get the impression people tend to stick to the sources that they know. Yes, they'll click on a link and stuff, but if you, if people watch your channel, they like your channel, they're subscribed or whatever, you create the video, they're going to watch it. And maybe because they like your style, they'd rather learn from you or the more, the more likely to check your, your video is say, for example, we both make a video about the same thing. You know, people see yours because they follow you, you know, so make the video. It's just something that I constantly like doubt myself and like, check and it's like it's just this ridiculous thought process and it's you just you know, i mean look i'm not gonna lie i i feel that every single time like the the self doubts of whether or not a video is good enough mm -hmm. it took look uh the first video that i ever made took me like 20 hours to just get the setup not even the, yeah. the filming the setup of how the camera looks to how the mm -hmm. you know, microphone was working yeah. learning obs studio <laughs> and things yeah. like that it was it was a nightmare but that is the main reason I stopped using a green screen. 
Oh yeah. Uh, see this? This is AI green screen. So, uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> so that like, makes sense. That no, makes sense. but, but I actually did buy a green screen. Like, I, okay. You can't see it very well, but like I have a green screen and stuff like, uh, green screen. Oh, look, I think I have even the same one, you know, yeah. like the, the it, one that folds. And it pops on, it pops on the back of your chair in the circle. Yeah. yeah it's all right. But my issue with actually, this is going to probably not particularly interesting, but my issue was with Camtasia and the fact that we could only select like one hex code of green. And it oh, took yeah. me so long to get, I was like, you know what? I don't care. I was like, my background looks okay right now. So I'll just minimize it, put it on and that's fine. I just, it was one less thing to have to worry about, you know? Yeah, Ben, my, my back my background does not look okay. I've got laundry here. <laughs> <laughs> you got beautiful leaves, mate. You know, you got the oh, whole yeah, green yeah. thing. It's, you know, it's it like, looks uh, amazing. Uh, my 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 YouTube uh, you know, it's like channel <laughs> barrier. I actually I've gotta say that I love the name of your your YouTube channel because obviously I know it's you know AJ Pockets your name, but Power BI Pockets sounds so cool, right? I mean it's kind of like a playground for Power BI. I I love it's it's one of those wonderful sounding name so good oh question. thanks ben you know it's like uh just one of those times when my name you know it's like uh, actually aligned for me <laughs> yeah. look you know when i was uh in jesus uh what is it grade school you know it's like mm. uh, we when we were learning you know it's like computers for the first time they would give you a login and it'd be the first two letters of your last name and the first two letters of your first name so my login was pain <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, you know, like, that's brilliant. It, you know, th there are, there are times when the name is good and there are times when people do not know how to pronounce your name. I, I had a colleague uh, a few years ago now and her username at the company was, it did the same thing with the surname, first name, etc. And together her um, login was McFly. And I was like, come on, that's so cool, man. <laughs> okay. You know what? That That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I love that. I was so jealous. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh. My original idea, I actually wanted to call it something like it was like um, Berry BI because Ben Ferry. Right. Often, often people often make this mistake and say, Dear Mr. Berry, because for some, I'm not sure why they do that, but they do. Um, but actually, I checked and it's actually quite a common name for like um, analyst type something like Berry. I have no idea why, but um, I think someone who had had um, on, the, on, on the live stream once his his channel or his linkedin or whatever is, is berry data berry i was like okay well i can't do that so there you go i, I mean you know it's like that that's fair fair enough but uh but i think that's called dyslexia <laughs> I, it's really strange how it, i it's really bizarre the number i mean i'll write in the email and i'll say best regards ben ferry and the email come back dear mr berry and i'm like how do you it's so it's more i mean it's i know it doesn't sound very often but it's like elite it's like three times a year at least, which I think is quite a lot for something where you see the name is just Ben. I mean, it's not a big deal. I don't care, but it's just. Okay. Well, uh, it okay. uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know what, when it comes to names, you know, it's like, I, I, my, my, my family's, you know, it's like largely Christian. So uh, my, you know, it's like mother actually wanted to, you know, it's like baptize me into, you know, it's like uh, a, you know, kind of Christian name and mm. the name that you, you know, it's like suggested to me was Francis. And I was like, it's never going to happen. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I'm sticking with my name forever. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But, uh, you know, it's also like, because it's a Korean name in my actual, you know, it's like passport, it's two different words. It's in space J, uh -huh. which is, which is fine. You know, yeah. like it's just one word, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. everywhere else. Right. But yeah. In my, you know, it's like company, uh, it, it, it has to follow, you know, it's like the way that it's written, you know, it's like for my, for my legal entity. So yeah. Teams thinks my name is just in. So it could be worse, Ben. It could be worse. Oh, man. And that could get really confusing if you're like on a, on a phone call with someone and they say like, what's your name? It's like, is it in Jay? say, no, it's just in. Justin? No, it's just in. <laughs> in it yeah, could get yeah. a whole, it could be a whole thing, you know? It, it's absolutely is a whole thing. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I was thinking. Um. MS Build. What are you hoping for, mate? What's your What's your expectation? Okay. Look, I'm not going to lie. Um. MS Build is going to be something that we all have to go to simply because every single MVP that's ever oh, said anything about it has said that it's going to change the game somehow. It's going and, to change the way you use data, something that the world has never seen before. Oh, yeah. It sounds I, like a movie slogan, right? <laughs> One platform. Yeah, exactly. 
it was the time of data. I don't know. Uh, but at the end of the day, I did manage to speak to, you know, it's like a number of MVPs and, you know, it's like I was in a lot of sessions. I, and I got to speak to some people from Microsoft even. And everyone says that, you know, things are going to change. And, uh, you know, it's like they can't necessarily say exactly what's going to change. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, 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 all I can say is that I'm excited. I know that, uh, you know, like people have said this, you know, it's like very, very often, like um, Jay, you know, the PM from Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like he, he's been, you know, it's like he's always said, I think maybe even on with, with you. Well, I know he said, you know, it's like uh, in one of the podcasts that the way that Microsoft builds new features for Power BI is what feature would bring more users, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's all about democratization that's all about making things easier for you know it's like the common person to use power bi and yeah. if you're in the power bi space that just means more work that means your work is extremely stable for the foreseeable future and i can't yeah, yeah. you know like I, I i can't say no to that right that that just means <laughs> i mean my thoughts are this so i'll, I'll bring up this question from, Aaron from william in a second um that i know that there was something posted um and it's 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 a it's about three elements coming together right because that's just what this is what's being being clear and um so this is why i want to maybe bring up this thing from from leo now is it just um chat gpt and q visual and uh, ms copilot that's my guess i think it's more than that i think it's really i have no idea right i obviously have no idea but it's like three things coming together to do something awesome or i, I, I don't know what uh, my only reservation and I'm, I'm probably very wrong is that the last the one that we had last year was which was huge the game changer and it was like data mart or something i believe oh yeah and it was like hey, okay yeah. i mean yeah. look this, this is true right data marts you know at the end of the day not actually a terrible idea at all no. i have seen use cases for it but it's it's still technically in preview it's like yeah. you know you can query sql directly mm. into you know it's like the data which is kind of still in power query and, and things like that and interesting and you know it's like cool mm. power you know it's like power bi data sets based on you know sql tables but it's like it's solving a problem that didn't exist mm. i'm sorry it's great it's, it's really good but Everyone, or not everyone, but many, many people say, I don't have any use cases for it. Right. Yeah. It's like, is Power BI service going to be your data warehouse? You know, it's like that, yeah, that exactly. doesn't, I mean, look, it, it could be that in the future, you know, like that is something that happens. Right. And, you know, it's like maybe, you know, we'll be kicking ourselves because maybe that's what Microsoft Build is about. Right? Well, knows? maybe this is the thing because it's maybe this is integration somehow between whatever issue or whatever. Right. And maybe that's the direction. It was like a preparation for this huge announcement this year. Uh, if I can just expand on my previous point, about it was I think that what I once read someone said this is going to change the way people work with data forever. And that person was talking about, um, oh man, what's it called? Am I having a complete mental blank here? Um, Data some, flows? No, models. The uh, um, When you bring the two models together. the um, Composite models? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Composite models. And again, it was good. But it wasn't as huge as it was, I think, anticipated to be. So I'm sure everything I'm saying here is completely wrong. And it's going to be amazing and fantastic. But I'm just tempering my expectations a little bit because it's like it's like when you know someone's seen a movie and like oh my god it's so amazing it was the best film of all time and then you go and watch it and it's like yeah okay it was fine okay look i'm not gonna lie one thing that i think is you know it's like very true about microsoft is that at the end of at the end of the day they are still a for-profit company everything that they release they do want to hype up a little bit right mm. but it is also like uh how do you say some things are really interesting. Like, uh, don't get me wrong, the open AI thing, you know, it's like, is is the big question. Will open AI eventually be able to, you know, it's like generate BIM files, for example, mm. data models based around, you know, it's mm. like generative prompts. That would be very cool. But mm. would that be optimized? Oh, God, you know, it's like, uh, you know, we would yeah. definitely still have work, right? Because oh, yeah. the, the idea of having like a fully optimized system that the, the whole AI can do, that would, you know... 
but it's it's also when you have these um bring us some of these comments in a second but it's when you have these um these changes it's also about not just thinking oh there's these changes that are amazing that can do so much um, is it gonna like affect my job or change my or my job to speak it's not it's about being the person who can help utilize utilize those tools to the best effect because you can't just have like you know 55 people doing things and then creating stuff around. it's about how to actually implement them successfully and actually make them efficient as possible in the company so i don't really have those concerns um but i could be very wrong and um <laughs> we'll see um uh, like this, this mm -hmm. was sorry i'm just gonna quickly bring up this was the comment regarding um composite models uh, i was watching the video on composite models by sql bi and I remember albert of Ferrari saying that being able to make these in power bi and um, make these in power bi was game changing um which was it was it was it was, it was good but i think not as huge as the expect of the average person within the community such as myself you know thinking oh it's gonna be amazing it's like, Meh. look uh so i attended a one-hour session about optimizing composite models you know delivered by alberto ferrari in you know it's like so yesterday right mm -hmm. two days ago yes okay but <laughs> Uh, all I've got to say is that, you know, when he was showing things and when, when he was talking about how, you know, small changes in the DAX could make things that, uh, you know, it's like typically is like 1.5, uh, you know, it's like uh, 1,500 milliseconds into like 10 milliseconds. Mm. Like there, there's a use case for that. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Sure. But it's all about speed. Right. Mm. And at the end of the day, something you do have to ask yourself is, you know, how much are companies really willing to take one or 10 seconds down to one second. Yeah. Because honestly, I don't I don't see that so much. Definitely yeah. there is a want, but it's 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 like a nice to have compared to the business value of seeing data for you know yeah year over time. Yeah. I mean a couple of things that I mean I would like if you're talking about 10 seconds, I would I would not be happy if I had a report where it took 10 seconds to apply. That's very over. fair. Um, but if you talk about, you know, like three seconds down to one second, like three seconds down to half a second, I remember I watched a video by Gina Cube, and I forget that was saying, you know, when you use, when you're analyzing your, your yeah, user report analyzer, it's called whatever, and you're basically checking all the performance of everything, and they're talking about really anything that over is, that is over 450 milliseconds is too much or whatever. And I was like, all right, that's that's a nice benchmark to know. And I went through all of my stuff, and I was like, change that, change that, change that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, um, yeah. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, it's like, I think the the worst reports that I've made, you know, it's like that went into production took like a minute and a half to load but, mm. because it was like, it was mm. like one of these rough and tumble solutions because they couldn't pull the data, you know, out of dynamics. So they wanted to pull in all of the, you know, it's like filters and pull out, you know, yeah. uh, a, a million rows. And, you know, it's like, of course, Power BI has the export limitations and, you know, mm. it was a whole thing. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, like, so, so if you're, if everyone watching, if your report is loading for two minutes, you know, it's like definitely the take Ferrari's course. <laughs> That's what you need to do. <laughs> I think, yeah, if it's two minutes, like, maybe have a look at it for sure. Oh, man. Um, but sorry, just also Kevin um, saying here that everything goes through the hype cycle. Oh, it's yeah, true. that's everything definitely true. It does. So we, we'll just have to, as non-NVPs, we'll just have to uh, sit here and wait. Although I, I will say, you know, it's like this, right? The host for, you know, it's like, uh, the host for uh, Microsoft Build is definitely, you know, it's a guy in a cube, right? So that's Microsoft saying something right there, you know? <laughs> like, it is, for sure. That is, that's a, it's a very solid point. Uh, right. So, you that. know, it's like, and so uh, if it was just something small, I don't, I don't think, you know, it's like they'd even bother, you know, it's like having, you know, it's like the two biggest Microsoft Power BI names. Yeah. Know, it's like doing it, right? Like, it must be something for us. Yeah. Oh, no, no, for sure. I'm a bit disappointed, however, because um, and so MS Build is the twenty fourth, twenty fifth. I'm I'm guessing it's not going to be, but I was hoping that the big announcement would be made on the twenty fourth, because on the twenty fifth I arranged the leaving drinks um, at my current company, so I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be around the evening of the twenty fifth, so I'll be like, I'll be like outside with my um, with my colleagues, friends, and having some some drinks and eating some burgers and be thinking so at the same MS Build, MS Build. <laughs> So it'll be like, a, uh, how do you say, you know, it's like you'll get home at, you know, it's like 3 a.m. And then, you know, it's like you'll open LinkedIn and it'll be 700 posts. About <laughs> yeah, exactly. 700 posts, 350 videos <laughs> already yeah. done, you know? Oh, uh, and you know, it's like, look, I'm not going to lie. More than anything else, I, I really treasure, you know, it's like this aspect of the LinkedIn community. You don't miss anything that happens because... <laughs> 
you know, like everyone, you know, it's like uh, posts about, you know, it's like the most important stuff. Like uh, this thing that happened, uh, what was it today? The the SharePoint thing, you know, it's like, yes, I, I've, I've seen 20 you. posts about that, Good right? Point. It's like, yeah, that's actually, it, it's a good that you brought, brought it up. I completely forgot about that. It looks like it. I mean, I didn't read a lot about it, but please talk about it. Uh, no, it, it's like um, explicit measures. We we're talking about a little bit earlier today, yeah, exactly. and they were just they were just talking about you know it's like how it's really funny because it's a pre announcement. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I, thought, I thought that as well. I was like, how do you pre? So you announce it or you don't? You know, it's like it's, but... so, so. So they've announced it, but it's not here yet, right? But yeah. it's really funny because Microsoft build is less than two weeks away, right? So you know, it's like, uh, so, so is this the pre-announcements to the reveals that are coming in Microsoft build? That's and... what it sounds like. Because otherwise, why would they? Yeah, and you have to wonder because the released. The pre-released um, that that feature, which I think is a big we're talking about, you know, basically using opening um, Microsoft uh, sorry, Power BI files with inside OneDrive, or increasing functionality there. The week before that, we talked about or they released the um, this new web modeling experience. Right, right. It seems very pointed towards a change somehow i don't know it's so so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna just explicitly say it. the changes that i'm expecting from you know it's like these announcements yeah, is right. version control right when right back things like this you know it's like things that the community has been clamoring for for mm. ages right mm. does anyone actually enjoy creating a power apps for right back i don't think so right <laughs> like uh you yeah, know um it's true so I've been trying to, there's this feature in Power BI where you can have uh, filters that go into your, you know, it's like um, M query. So it's mm -hmm. like dynamic query parameters or something like this. I don't really exactly remember what it's called, but I was thinking that maybe there's a way because I've, I've seen some of Chris Webb's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like posts about how you can have a query call a stored procedure. I'm not, actually, I don't think that was Chris Webb. That was someone else that wrote, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm an M query could be used to call a stored procedure in SQL, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And with the dynamic query parameters and a custom visual, like a text search or something, you could basically put whatever you want as the filter. Mm -hmm. So that means technically combining the two, you know, it's like techniques together, you could write something, have it filter a specific line in a table and call a stored procedure to initiate a write back. But what I've just described would take forever to, to build, right? Like, <laughs> like, it, like, like at that point, people would just be like, "Look, I'm going to make a power apps just because I didn't. I don't want to mm. listen to this Asian guy. He he's talking too much." <laughs> like, I mean, oh, I love it. I love uh, yeah, it. And, and you know, like I I, I tried. I, I tried doing this, and it's it's just so janky, you know, because it's mm. like. Um, yeah. And it only works in one scenario, which is uh, either composite or, you know, it's like direct query. Cause like the thing has to like, uh, if you're going to do write back and it, it updates your report, cause that's, you know, the user experience you normally want, then it has to be direct query. Right. Mm -hmm. And if it's mm -hmm. not, then it's not going to work. Yeah, it's composite. quite limited. Yeah. Right. So it's like, uh, you know, it could be good. Could be good. Does won't work. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Donald's saying here, right back would be uh, wonderful, or I wonder, and then yeah, also vision control would be um, would be life changing. I mean, vision oh, control yeah. is definitely coming, right? I mean, we know this. I mean, you got with Tim Dillon stuff, it's definitely something that's going to be um, arriving. Soon. Yeah. So, like, uh, don't get me wrong, like, uh, Kurt Bueller's, like, uh, what, two weeks ago, he released, uh, you know, it's like an enterprise use case where he was talking a little bit about the uh, you know, it's like version control that you can do with GitHub repos and, mm. you know, it's like Azure DevOps. And there was another amazing session, you know, it's like, um, oh God, I, I forget their names. The, there were two twin brothers, actually, identical twin brothers in, you know, it's like SQL Day who are giving, uh, you know, a, you know, it's a presentation about how to use Azure DevOps and GitHub okay. repos. Uh, and, you know, it's like, it was, it was really, really, you know, it's like, uh, great because there's like uh, specific plugins that you can use mm. in, that connect to Azure DevOps and you can create release pipelines. And it, it's like a whole way of doing what they called data ops instead of like mm. DevOps. So mm. it's like the DevOps is more for, you know, it's like .NET applications or like software development, right? Yeah. And data ops is more like, you know, 
um, more like what we do. And it was really interesting. And, and it's basically aligned to, you know, it's like uh, Kurt's, you know, it's like uh, enterprise uh, development. Yeah. But it's also like coming back to, you know, live sessions versus, you know, uh, online blogs and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Reading, you know, it's like uh, the Kurt's use case, just from there, it's very difficult to figure out all of the steps that you need to actually get to that point. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like having it shown in front of me, it's like, oh, I finally get what Kurt was saying. <laughs> 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 like... Oh, class, love it. Yeah. I'm sorry to also just bring a comment here. I think sure. that I, I agree with this. I wonder if MS Build is going to be quite Synapse heavy as well. Seems to be the hot new and uh, the new hot thing on the market now, especially with grinding running. Yes, I think for, for sure. sure, right? Because yeah. Synapse is basically an amalgamation of you know it's like lots of different things, right? But I, I think it's also like you know at the end of the day, Synapse is. Um, is the strategy right power bi mm. is the strategy to mm. you know it's like make every excel user a power bi user you know get their number of you know people you know get their number of users up but synapse mm. is the enterprise strategy because mm. they they'll give you everything they'll give you uh auto machine learning they'll give you databricks they'll give you you know mm. it's like anything that you could ask for an end-to-end -end solution yeah. because and, and it's pretty obvious that this is what they're aiming for because that's what every other company is doing. Snowflake <laughs> is trying to become yeah. a full data provider. You know, mm -hmm. Google's trying to do that. So you know, it's, and Microsoft Synapse. That's that's what it it's going to become, right? Like yeah. an end to end. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. It'll be. Um, I'm sure. Basically, as we said, of all all the hype and all the posts, all the MVPs doing lots of um, marketing. I think most people will be tuned in and eagerly awaiting this so um yeah which is also probably a good thing that next week i'm not doing a live stream next thursday because i think there'd be like minus 10 viewers because everyone would be would be watching ms builds yeah honestly you know it's like right now i i'm taking a little bit of a break because you know um I, I I don't want to make a video that will become outdated in two weeks oh man yeah <laughs> you're totally the, uh, Actually, the big one for that, which was a huge, which for me was a, was a huge thing, was when they um, did the, the the field parameters. That right. was a, that was a video killer, because so many people had done stuff like workarounds oh and God. tricks, and yeah. then it was like, okay, get rid of that, get rid of that, all just gone. But, yeah. Uh, so you know, it's like um, I, I have this one, you know, it's like uh, you know, it's like file that you know, it's like I still keep back, you know, it's like in my museum folder. Uh, historical archive of things that I built back in the day, and it's like uh, it's it's actually a report that I made as uh, you know it's like as a report that I made when applying to my current job, right? So so you know it's like as part of that process, I was making you know it's like a report and you know it's like to send in, and you know it's like and I was doing dynamic uh, you know it's like access changes and stuff like that. So the whole the whole shebang cross join union. Yeah keep uh, filter treat as yeah, oh yeah. my god <laughs> it was just and i i remember yeah i mean everything that you said is, is absolutely spot on you, you look back and you think to do now what is just so easy back then the the processes you had to go through i remember the, the re first report i created i was like i showed you like see see how cool this is you can't do this in in any other power bi report that we have at this company this is this is the only one you can do it that report never even made it to production because the stakeholder left the company and it just went the way of the, the just, power bi graveyard yeah like uh all that i effort. mean it's the same as uh excel graveyards right this is like mm. the one thing that you know it's like enterprise uh power bi still struggles with i think oh, yeah. you know it's like lineage like making mm. sure that you know oh my god what, what do they call it the bus risk right if, if someone gets hit by a bus you know it's like ah, what's yeah. the risk Absolutely. and uh, like i i feel like it's just uh that is just the way it is right like yeah, it's the nature of the job for sure the the simple fact is that power bi needs to be self-service to get you know mm -hmm. it's like the numbers that microsoft is looking at you know yeah. to you know for usage and yeah. it, that is never going to change yeah. so uh, you know it, it's going to be the rise of the power bi admin soon i think yeah yeah Good point, actually. And uh, this, I think, is a, a valid comment, I gotta say. Uh, yay, big announcements. Don't worry about fixing all the broken shit. <laughs> um, you know what? I, yeah, I feel the pain there for sure. I mean, they, they can't not make big announcements, right? Because it's about, you know, 
improving or getting new customers or getting bringing new people in to have more cases to use the tool and stuff. But as someone who's been using it for quite a while, I would put myself in that category of using 2017. We've seen all these advancements, it's great, but sometimes it's like, but what about all the stuff that just doesn't work, man? It's sometimes just, you wish they had like, I mean, I think we they they have fewer resources than we, we assume that they do, but just like one team just fixing all. I mean, of course, they have um, Miguel, who's doing amazing work with the of course, visualization. Right? Fantastic, great. But the little bits and pieces that affect you every single day, I, 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 t I take your, um, your point on that comment. So, yeah. yeah you know, I, I'm, I'm so, you know, it's like there. It's just like, don't get me wrong. There are so many things that, you know, it's like, I think could be improved. Like, uh, like Liam and Donald are making some, you know, it's like comments about calculation groups and just gonna I, bring it up. Yeah. 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 Go for it. But it's also like, uh, you know, Alberto Ferrari and, you know, it's like, uh, Mark Russo have even said that calculation groups, if it was just a little bit better, you know, if some mm. things were just a little bit, mm. you know, it's like better, it'd be like a complete product but they don't consider it a complete product right and you know like they, they've said that you know it's like on youtube on on their courses and stuff yeah. and i think that's true like i i know the logic behind yes you can't have implicit measures because if you try to put a calculation group filter on an mm. implicit measure it doesn't know what the measure is yeah and, you know it's like fine but it's also like um when you create a calculation group it's supposed to speed things up but in reality, it slows things down because of implicit measures. That has been my experience in some reports. But why, why, why would you want to use implicit measures though? Uh, so I'll say this, right? Uh, implicit measures is definitely something you'd want to have. You know, it's like activated for citizen developers because of the whole self-service thing, mm. right? Like, uh, I think something that can bring a lot of benefit is having things like. Uh, you know, it's like calculation groups for time intelligence for yeah. given to a citizen, you know, it's like developer and they're, you, you tell them, write a formula, put this filter on and you've got year over year mm -hmm. percentage, month mm -hmm. over month. And I think that's fantastic. You know, it, it really, you know, it's like uh, gets rid of the need for citizen developers to really understand what time intelligence is. And yeah. it's, it's just a filter. Yeah. But most people start Power BI with like, uh, you know, it's like the whole drag and drop thing. People for are, sure. you know, it's like, very not happy with you know it's like but i don't hacks. i don't think that I, I i take your point i don't think the people so for example i create a report when i create a report i create it for it's going to be the i wouldn't say a final product because it's no such thing but the product that goes out and the users use it and all that kind of stuff so it wouldn't be then handled by someone who would have those restrictions Whereas someone who is just, you know, um, doing some ad hoc reporting or they want to quickly just check something, they wouldn't have that restriction anyway because they're, they're opening a new PBIX, right? Right. So in that yeah. regard, yeah, I, I agree. And sometimes when I'm quickly checking, I'll be like, yeah, drag, 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 check, done, finished, cool. Um, so if I develop something, I'm happy to use uh, type of editor because I know I'm not going to use any implicit measures. Whereas, I don't know, I think... I just think a, a user who doesn't use a tablet editor can feel free to do so. My my using tablet editor is not going to affect their job. You know what I'm saying? Does that make that's, sense? That, I think that's absolutely true. I really feel like, you know, there's pros and cons. Honestly, I, I, I use calculation groups all the time. You know, it's like, I love calculation groups. There's like one calculation group that Rui Romano, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like showed in one of his mm. ancient posts, which is like applying the, the random function on everything. So, you know, if you've got some, you know, uh, sensitive data, you can apply calculation group on the whole page and it'll make everything randomized, which is nice if you, if you have a report and you have to show it to someone, but you, you can't show it to them. And, yeah. you know, like, like there, are, point, actually. Yeah. there are certain things that are, you know, it's like fantastic use cases, but yeah. it's also like, would you actually, would I recommend using, you know, it's like month over month or year over year percentages for, you know, it's like actual calculation groups, which I've even made videos on hmm. in a, in a production model? Probably no, you know, mm. like, it's, it's, I, I take your point. It's yeah. The point being is that it was really sold as something that this is going to save you so much time. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I think the reason it doesn't is because it's that classic, right? 
you save time in one area, so you do more in another area. So actually, you just build in more functionality that, and that kind of fills. So basically, you know, you were doing one hundred percent of just measures, right? And now you're doing fifty percent right. measures, fifty percent other features because you can because you're using your tabular editor. So um, yeah, and not only that, tabular editor. If uh, it's, you know, some, someone's trying to, you know, it's like create uh you know it's like if someone's trying to adopt a report that already exists and they don't have this level of knowledge it's it's a black box right like they'll never find it that's a that's a solid point yeah true i'm currently going through this now handing my report, reports over to people and um actually uh, before i continue down that train of thought i'll just bring up blue in the point because i think it's a decent one for me it's the trade-off between people in my team that want to get work done no matter what and don't care about best practice unless it directly affects something very valid totally understand that um also, absolutely i'm also restricted i don't intentionally do it but of course you know i'm thinking really just about how i've been working at my current employer for the past years everyone works differently there are different you know types of teams that work together in different ways so i fully understand that for sure and there are many many um team situations or shared work situations and as you just said nj that's a, a classic one you someone leaves the company or someone hands over a report to someone or and they have no idea about um tabular editor and then right. they look at it and like what the is going on here like how how does any how does how is this happening you know I think, look, I'm going to sum it up in, you know, it's like I'm with maybe a different problem, you know, mm. it's like specifically, I feel like a lot of people who are hiring Power BI developers don't know enough Power BI, don't oh, yeah. know, like, because it's like, do you hire a Python developer, right? And, you know, you could hire a Python developer for data, or you could hire a Python developer for creating applications or something like that, right? Yeah. And it's like, um, that's what a, that's why it's so hard to hire a, <laughs> I just saw Christians. <laughs> so, but it seems that we're both avoiding it. Depends. Oh uh, yeah, look, you know what? Uh, Love it, it depends. Could be the Power BI community catchphrase. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Back to my point. I, I was just saying that because uh, you know the progression of learn of accumulating Power BI knowledge is such that you know when you're starting out. Udemy, link, uh, LinkedIn Learning, you know, it's like a uh, plural site, pick one, do the course, do, do, you know, it's like the, the, the 10, 15, 30 hours that they recommend you yeah. and you'll get to a certain point. Uh, there'll be PL 300, you know, it's like stuff and you mm. can do like 50 hours. And honestly, I really believe that within 50 to a hundred hours of studying, maybe a hundred hours is even too much. You could, you can pass the PL 300. Like, okay. I, I really believe that, mm. but I also believe that once you get to that stage, what do you learn? What do you yeah. learn to get from a junior to, you know, it's like a mid-level to a senior level. And for me, a senior person is definitely someone who understands the technology, yeah. the, you know, it's like data storytelling aspect and yeah. can gather requirements. And, you know, it's like, that's sometimes a little hard for, you know, it's like some, sometimes people are really specialized in data storytelling or technical yeah. side, but I've been hiring for about a year and it's really hard to find people who, you know, it's like excel at all three things mm -hmm. very much. So, so then you try to find, you know, it's like, um, mid-level people and you know it's like when once you get to the mid-level people you'll have people who you know it's like are you know it's like have used really niche techniques like mm. um god what what what's the one where you have personalized visuals but you have the you know it's like specific fields that show up in the personalized visual i think it's something like schemas or Okay, I forget the exact word, but there's uh, something that you can create in tabular mm. editor. So when you have the personalized feature, mm. a visual a visuals feature where you know people can basically just select what they want to see, you mm. can let them see only specific fields for oh, that okay. visual, right? Okay, yeah. I, I forget the actual name, but I'm sure people will probably maybe know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but something like that is super niche, but perspectives, Backers. thank you, fantastic. Yeah. But uh, because it's something that uh, is, you know, it's like very niche. I've personally never used it. And, mm. you know, it's like someone might have a lot more knowledge about it, but that person might not have enough knowledge about SQL usage, mm. you know, it's like, or Azure usage. And maybe they've only been using Snowflake for Power BI. And it's just, there's all these different flavors of knowledge. And, yeah, for sure. you know, it's, it's really, really difficult in my opinion to get, um, even worse, you know, it's like closer to the point where, you know, it's like a bus risk actually is reduced, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you mm -hmm. can't find just a Power BI developer who 
immediately be able to replace someone who left, right? It's very difficult. Yeah. I mean, because again, come back to this thing about, you know, how companies use Power BI or, or what they see Power BI to be. If you're, do you see Power BI just as a place where you visualize data? Uh, <laughs> love it. Um, you know, uh, if it, is it just some way you visualize data or is it something where it actually, is it part of the, the ETL or is it part of it? There are so many different aspects, but I think, and I think it's getting better, but I think for the most part, from what I've seen, it's just basically about dashboarding. People think of Power BI and think of just dashboarding. So the, the requirement or the requests or, or what, they're, what they're looking for is sometimes quite limited, um, which can sometimes make things easier, but then it makes it refreshing when you have a conversation with someone and they really have really a specific idea about what they want to do, because when they have that, it makes the job so much easier, right? If someone Absolutely. comes in and says, oh, you're, you're, you're a Power BI person, so let's build some report. But it's like, well, we're not going to start with the reports, you know? Let's just take, take it easy. And um, so it's, yeah, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Right. I, I'm looking at some of the comments and I'm yeah. like, you know, uh, I think this is so, so real mm. that, you know, like uh, people expect uh, us to know everything, right? Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's like, and, and there are absolutely some benchmarks like Liam's next comments where, you know, advanced scripting with tabular editor, you know, it's like uh, to modify, you know, it's like, and that's C-sharp scripting, right? That's that's literally C-sharp, mm. which is a completely different language, yeah. right? Absolutely. But then you've got, uh, you know, it's like the XMLA, you know, it's like endpoints and you've got APIs and you've got, you know, it's like different things like that. and I, a couple of years ago, I was, you know, uh, how, trying to, you know, it's like make some API calls just to, you know, it's like get some embedding fixed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know what a post is, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. uh, and it was just like, um, the business was like, oh, you, you know, you're in IT, you know what an API is, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, sir, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Class. It was real bad. It was real bad. Love it. Yeah, but this is a, a, a good point because, you know, I talk about, you know, flavors of knowledge and that, that sort of stuff or um, where was this? Yeah, expect. See, this comment I find interesting. Businesses expecting Power BI developers to know everything. I think that's interesting because I think it also comes back this this concept of, you know, the known knowns and the, what is it, the known knowns and the unknown unknowns. Like right. they, but they see, what they see is everything is often not everything. It's actually just a small, quite Subset, narrow view. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and yes, there are also, to know everything, what I think is important or what the, the expectation is from my side is more like, are you a person who basically knows where the resources are? I think someone mentioned this before, knows if you don't know something, how quickly can you actually get that knowledge? A lot of what we do isn't about knowing everything, as I said there, but rather like being able to learn when we need to use something that we've, that we've never used before. I think that really sets that difference, um, you know? And I think it's said quite often that, you know, quite often, you know, you constantly have to learn and the need to learn is sometimes quite overwhelming, you know? But however, if you look at it in a different way and say, I like to learn, I'll take in bits and pieces, but I'm not gonna get stressed about it because when I need to know something, I know where I can go to and find the resources to use that, to learn that thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna lie, the uh, the comments are really funny right now. Yeah, I've been trying, <laughs> I'm trying to as well. uh, I mean, I'm looking at Christian and you know, it's like, uh, okay, look, uh, businesses need a button. Business need businesses need specific colors. You know, it's like, um, and my God, businesses, uh, you know, it's like love bookmarks. They they love, you know, it's like all all of these things. But the thing that business needs the most is that you know it's like the data and everything is refreshed yesterday. And why isn't it yeah. done yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Oh my God, it, it it's really look. I'm not gonna lie. One thing that I absolutely love about the Power BI community is that a lot of the problems people, uh, you know, it's like that you go through. Other people have gone through as well, right? Like it's mm. you know, I don't ever really feel like uh, I'm doing something that's I'm completely alone in. You know, mm -hmm. there are definitely people that I can reach out to who, you know, it's like may have some, you know, it's experience on this. I could write a post on LinkedIn and I could say, guys, is this how you do it? And, you know, I might get like one or two responses. Mm -hmm. It's it's like uh, at the end of the day, I feel like, yes, 
experience is something that most people have and experience in your specific problem mm -hmm. will probably be something about it on like the power bi forums or something and, and i think that's really fantastic it's like especially in the fact that uh even in poland right like um the data community is very very closely knit there mm -hmm. are people who've been you know it's like doing these things uh you know it's like in polish and doing polish presentations for 10, 20 years, right? Like people who've been working with SQL server version 2007, <laughs> like, you know, and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and I really think that, you know, it's like, uh, if, if I was in any other technology like .NET or something like that, I wouldn't be talking to people from, you know, it's like Microsoft about .NET and stuff like that, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I really think the community is so, so great and so giving yeah. and- For sure. It's nice. It's it's hugely important. Um, do you have time for one more question before I call oh, it? Absolutely. I'm going to bring up a question from Radamir here, and um, see. It's quite it's quite a, maybe quite a big one. So let's see how you how you go with it. Per your opinion, when report when should reporting be introduced to the company? Because if processes are too far away, you don't know what you should be be looking at. Oh, okay. Look, let, let, let that's me. That's a question and a half, isn't it? Out. No, let go. me stretch out so that I can finally say it. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, no. Okay, so th that's the joke answer. The the real answer is this, right? Um, you should do, you know, it's like introduce reporting when it can bring value. Like, uh, look, I'm not gonna lie. I I watch explicit measures all the time, and one thing that Mike Carlo always says is, you know, it's like the main questions you should ask. Uh, you know, it's like when you're talking about, um, you know a report is does it make money or does it save money right so if it brings value then absolutely you can you know it's like make a report if your company doesn't have power bi but you know a little bit of power bi and they've got you know it's like certain things like excel sap you know it's like things that you can you know it's like speed up and introduce uh some value with power query you can absolutely do that do a small proof of concept in like an hour or two show that to you know it's like someone and say look we really have something here there's technology that can make our lives a lot easier but at the end of the day it's also like you know introducing reporting is an investment that's always goes to the CTO. Maybe your company is very small and there, you know, it's like uh, maybe you're bootstrapped. Maybe there isn't uh, enough to go around, but there's always, I believe, like a use case to introduce reporting somewhere. It's just, you know, it's like, can you get to the place that needs it and actually provide value? Because that's how, you know, it's like you introduce reporting. That's how, you know, it's like you push it. Most people, you know, it's like who, you know, it's like work in a company don't, have like um don't have like the the drive to actually try something and then you know it's like take it to a manager because like what if the manager steals the idea and you know it's like takes the credit and things like that there's there's like so many reasons to you know to just stay where you are but if you're talking about you know it's like what the overall strategy of a company to introduce reporting should be it it, it would be as soon as it can provide value and if you're using excel it can already you know it's like guaranteed provide value that's a solid answer. Oh yeah, like Welcome I had this to... exact question, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, a, 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 like very similar one. Uh, you know, it's like in the conversations I had. You know, it's like in the conference. So I am mm -hmm. well prepared. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done, sir. Um, I'll bring up one more thing and then we can call it a day. I've, I've been it. keeping you here long enough. I do apologize, but this is uh, true. Um, I only created my Twitter account to keep with the power back community. It's true. I mean, that's the only. I used to have twitter that i use for like social purposes and stuff but now it's just i created one a power bi guy and um yeah it's just to read stuff what's going on kind of see if there's an article i can look at it yeah i occasionally post something stupid no oh, it's um, true it's like uh don't get me wrong i you uh, you know it's like when i was starting my social media journey i had youtube TikTok, linkedin twitter reddit but now i only use youtube and linkedin because the the other ones take a lot of time yeah, i mean yeah. linkedin already takes up a lot of time for me because but, yeah, yeah. but i enjoy it a lot sure. so you know just just pick a couple that work for you and if you try and do everything it'll just be like just overwhelming and get quite boring to be honest it's true i have to apologize for this comment which we're, we're just um can i ask anything about power bi just finishing off, Matt, I do apologize. Maybe the question that you had, you can look at some of the previous live streams. Maybe it was in there. It's about, there's about 70 of them. So go and watch 70 live streams and maybe you can um, <laughs> you find the answer to your question. Um, but yeah, everyone, 
thank you very much for joining in with the chat. It was some really cool comments tonight, some great questions. And um, of course, Inje, thank you very much. Hey, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, it's it's actually really great to be part of this community. And you'll see me in the comment section, probably. <laughs> <laughs> class. And hopefully we can see each other in person in probably our next step. Right? Hey, hey, fingers crossed. You know, it's like, uh, that would be let's cool. hope it happens. Fantastic. Uh, I will back uh, next Thursday. Exactly, next Thursday. Um, again, thanks for joining, and Jay, and thanks to everyone in the comments. It's Take care, fantastic. everyone. Bye. Have a lovely evening and day, all that kind of stuff. Goodbye. Don't you wanna have